Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the law. Now I've gone on rants before about how human beings think they can change the world by electing uh, new leaders or how they can change the world by having a revolution. But uh, another thing that comes up quite often in this here prepper community is the law. Changing the laws. Let's as Americans, let's stand up for our rights and get some more beneficial laws on the books. You know, get rid of some of these laws that ain't right. So, we're going to talk about that right now. And we're going to talk about that with actual laws that have taken place so you can see for yourself how the law really works. In this country, when the Constitution was written, it was put in there very specifically that we had the right to keep and bear arms. The state I live in also has a Constitution. And when it was written, they put the same thing in there. In fact, as this question got came up again, they actually wrote other legislation to cover our right to keep and bear arms and, and give the details. Uh, where I live, by law, by paper law, you can open carry a gun anywhere you want. It's always been like that. The state I live in has never had an anti-gun rights law, ever. And yet, people who would carry guns would go to jail, or at the very least have their guns confiscated. And if you wanted to get your gun back, you had to hire the judge's, you know, illegitimate lawyer's son at a rate of about, who knows, 10,000 bucks to get your thousand dollar gun back. So, laws on the books don't mean anything. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Laws on the books mean nothing. But you can work with the laws. I mean, there's always ways around it, legal ways. And so, for, for me, I think I got my first pistol in 1980. It was a big old 357 Magnum revolver. You know, I, I didn't feel like there was going to be a day when I would feel comfortable carrying it, so I didn't concern myself with the weight or anything. But uh, as time went on, I got to feeling a little weird about having a gun in my car or in my house and not being able to take it out of my car or my house. So. I thought about it. I had enough people to talk to who were in this gun carrying community and I made the decision to go ahead and get legal. So I got a concealed weapons permit and I went whole hog. I got the little license, uh, you know, I got the badge and the little badge holder that would hold my dollar bills and, and I felt comfortable. I, I uh, traded in my gun for, a, you know, one of those lightweight plastic guns and if you don't know what I mean, it's just because, I mean, all modern guns are plastic. Revolvers aren't, but like like Glocks, the guns that police carry, they've got a metal barrel and a couple of little springs in there made of metal, but the rest of the gun is pretty much plastic. But it, it doesn't mean it's junk. They'll last forever. Well, in any case, after spending all of my money getting set up to carry a gun, I got a few years out of it before this issue came up again. You know, and so people were starting to send me emails. You know, we're going to meet up at the state capitol and we're all going to open carry. Well, I don't, I don't need trouble. And I don't care about the laws because I know the law's fake. So I just would skip through that, you know, delete them, delete all those emails. Uh, but uh, a lot of people didn't delete the emails. They went to these events and they got arrested. And uh, when they went to court to get their guns back, it, just like I said, they had to hire a lawyer. And what they charged them with, since there is no law against open carry, they charged them with concealed carry. Now, these people that were arrested were wearing holsters. Their guns were in a holster, and everybody knows what a gun in a holster looks like. It's not like they're trying to hide anything. But the judge that heard the case made the decision that if the gun was hanging around your neck from a string, the part of the gun behind the string would be concealed. So there was no, from that point on, it didn't matter that this, the state I live in had open carry because suddenly open carry has become concealed carry. And that just made a lot of these gun rights nuts all upset. So they petitioned and they hired lawyers and spent gazillions of dollars of resources to get the law changed. Now, they didn't really actually get the law changed. What they did is they got people to, the, you know, the government to admit that the laws on the book said that you could open carry. Now the problem is we got a couple of years of constant barrage from the media about how gun laws were going to be changed and how the police just didn't know how they were going to deal with the influx of crime that might follow such a law. Well, the fact is, criminals carry guns because, you know, regardless of the law, that's why they call them criminals. Uh, making the law allow 
non-criminals to carry guns never has a negative effect. And you can look at the statistics. States like Texas with lenient gun laws have less crimes than areas like Washington, D.C. or Los Angeles where it is nearly impossible to own a gun. And police, police recognize this. So if, if they really were surveying police, they would not have got the story about how the police were concerned about how they were going to deal with this. So part of having a concealed weapon permit is reading this pile of instructions about what that means. If you have a concealed weapon permit, you can go anywhere you want except like courthouses and churches. And you can't go to like gay rights parades or anything like that carrying a gun. But pretty much everything else, you can go. And, and since I, I spend very little uh, time at parades or in the courthouse or in churches, it's not an issue for me. But another place that you can't carry is any place that is protected by federal law. And what does it take to get that? Well, you tell the federal government you want a placard. They send you this placard about that big, has a circle on it with a line through it, and on the other side of that line is a pistol. No firearms. And what that means is that if you've got a concealed weapon permit, they have your signature on a piece of paper saying you know it's wrong to carry a weapon into any location that displays one of those placards. So in the past, if I had no concealed weapon permit and I went into a place like that, it may actually be to my advantage not to have a concealed weapon permit. But now that I have a concealed weapon permit, I'm acknowledging that I can't go in there. So then if I do go in there, they got me. So here's what the law says. The law says I'm free to carry. Now what's the real law? The real law is if I go anywhere, I'm going to jail. If I got a gun and I go to get gas, I'm going to jail. If I go buy groceries with a gun, I'm going to jail because every one of those places has one of those placards now. And it's just happened when we got gun rights. Once we got our gun rights, the government mailed out about a gazillion of them placards. So it's over. So all you guys have spent all your money on lawyers fighting against the, the man to get your gun rights, you know, thanks a lot. Now we're going to talk about another law that everybody's getting excited about right now. Marijuana. It's a big issue. The federal government may, in the very near future, make it legal to smoke marijuana, to grow marijuana. And people are excited about this. Now let's just look at how law works, like what I just said about the gun rights, and let's look at marijuana. In this country, just like every country, we have what's called slave labor. In some countries they call it factories, in our country they call it the prison system. Now, if you're unwilling to admit that the prison system is slave labor camps, look at minimum wage. Most people in this country make minimum wage or something very close, which is slave labor. Minimum wage means that you can work all day for less money than it takes to live. Because anybody that knows, everybody knows, if you work 40 hours a week at minimum wage, you cannot afford food or shelter. One or the other, maybe, but not both. And by the time they get finished taxing you and Obamacare and you, you can't afford anything. So that's slave labor. Now, maybe some of you don't understand how the prison system works, but prisons today are not people sitting in a jail cell. These are people that manufacture commercial goods. Every prison in the country manufactures some kind of commercial goods. They make body armor, they make clothing, they make furniture, and it's so much uh, of this is being manufactured that 75% of all export goods from the United States are produced in slave labor camps. I mean the American prison system. Now you gotta think this through. I want you to think. What's going through your mind right now? For a lot of people what's going through their mind is well our prison system is overcrowded. I mean every day we have to release violent criminals because we just don't have the prisons to hold them all. That's a lie. It's a fiction. That is a fiction. In this country, every day, violent criminals are released because they're not good factory workers. You know, they're not releasing the marijuana smokers. They're releasing the murderers and rapists. The average nonviolent offender will serve less time than the average violent or the Backwards. The average violent offender will serve less time than the average nonviolent offender. That is a statistic. That's a fact. And one third of everybody in the prison system is there for smoking 
or selling or purchasing or growing marijuana. Now, I'm not trying to be the marijuana advocate here. In fact, I'm one of the guys that's scared of this law. I don't want marijuana to be legalized because you know what? They're going to look for some other nonviolent offender to put into the prison system. You know, my, the inspection sticker on my car is expired. What if they give out prison sentences for expired inspection stickers? They're going to have to find people somewhere. Um, obviously, you can look at the direction this country's going and get a pretty good idea of where it's going. And it's, it's going to be something similar to marijuana. It might be a different plant, maybe fruit trees. I mean, right now, there's very, very few outlets for chemical-free, healthy food. Most food that's in this country, like 99%, is GMO foods that have been sprayed with pesticides and herbicides, the foods that are killing us. And that's good for the country because a lot of the money that's being moved around is being moved through the hospital systems and the insurance systems. So, and you can look this up yourself. They have SWAT teams that are raiding health food stores for selling raw milk. You know, the only form of milk that's good for you. Uh, they have people that are going into hog farms and slaughtering uh, people's hogs. You know, I'm talking about people that have a thousand hogs or having all of their hogs slaughtered. And, you know, you think, oh, no, 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 that can't be real. It is real. You know, it's just like, why, why did we get marijuana laws? Where we, we took this drug, supposedly, and we told people that everyone who smokes it rapes and murders white women. That's the story for 100 years now. Everyone who smokes marijuana rapes and murders white women. Now, the reality is, if you have an idea in your head to go rape and murder some white women, and you smoke marijuana, in general, you're going to suddenly think, I really don't feel like raping and murdering white women. I, I would, I'd like some cookies. You know, that, that's how it works, from what I've been told. So, um, we're going we're gonna, to uh, go ahead and uh, attach something like that to hogs. And, and can that be done? Yeah, easily. You know, I mean, think about it. 75% of the people in this country are... It's, don't, don't even stick to this, because I didn't look this up, but I know that a whole lot of people have smoked marijuana, and they didn't murder or rape white women. And, uh, and yet people believe that. Even the people that have smoked it can sit there and listen to somebody on the networks say that and go, yeah, man, I'm glad I gave that up. And tomorrow, if the networks tell you that uh, people who are, are not the elite raising if if they tell you tomorrow that human beings raising hogs are causing the destruction of America's agricultural system, you'll believe it. You'll believe you. They tell you that wild hogs are destroying agriculture, and then they tell you that that man's hogs look like wild hogs. Then in your head, you're going to go, "Wow, this is very reasonable." Thank God we have a country that protects us from this. Never mind that that man's supposed wild hogs are all in pens where they can't get to your agriculture. You feel good that that man's hogs are being slaughtered. So just know that that day they pass that law and you go to Walmart token on your doobie, probably your kid is going to get sent to prison for out of, out of date inspection sticker. Good luck with changing the law. You don't want to survive. Don't listen to me.